Hello, I'm Julia Messer and I am an independent hairstylist and I work in Sudbury, Massachusetts. I thought that it would be uh, really informative if I showed you a little bit of second day hair tips. Um, I have um, I personally have very fine hair and sometimes second day or third day hair is a little tricky for us. So I thought that it would be really interesting to see what I do and maybe you'll pick up something that helps you. So to get started, I have a few things that are necessary, right? So we have dry shampoo. That's very important here i for the purposes of this video i have already brushed out my hair and used my dry shampoo because it's a process uh spray it on you want your hair to turn white and then um and then it'll absorb all the oils it'll start to not be white anymore and then you can go in and do like a shampooing motion where you kind of rub it into your scalp a little bit and then um, you can brush it out. So this is just a, a regular wet brush and I also have a comb here. Um, I have a clip, um, some rollers here of different sizes. These ones get warm in the middle but that's not necessary. Um, some clips for the rollers and a curling iron, okay? So um, yesterday I blow dried, blow dried my hair with a little bit of a heat protector in it. That's important because then um, when you go to do second day things, there's already some sort of um, heat, protect heat protection in there and that's important. Oh, and I also have some hairspray. So with all that being said, let's get going. So I, like I said, I've already done my dry shampoo routine and then I am going to section off from behind my ears here back like this and then just get that, let's just get that out of our way. Okay. Then you wanna split this in the back here in half, okay? And then that will get it, make it be easier so that we're not trying to, you know, break our shoulders to, to do what we need to do. So um, this is a one inch curling iron. If you want a looser, style use a bigger curling iron if you want a tighter style use a smaller curling iron so with my first section i'm going to take it and then i'm going to just brush it like this then i'm going to take my hairspray and just do one pass on the front and one pass on the back and then i'm going to rebrush that again to distribute then with my clip facing outwards, can you see? Facing outwards, I'm going to smooth out the top, curl that in, take the clip, kind of push it down a little bit, and then hold this part here. And then I'm gonna hold it there for a second, and then I'm gonna work my way down, and then I'm going to do that again. And that way, the top part of your hair is curled just as much as the bottom part. And I'm working my way down until I can't see the hair anymore. And then I'm going to just hold it there for a second. And I kind of do a little bit of a tap, a very gentle tap, just to see um, if it's getting warm because you want it to be warm but not hot. And if there's smoke coming out, that's also not good. You don't wanna do that. So then I'm gonna let this go. And then do you see how it's a ringlet here? I'm going to now take a big um, roller and I'm going to 
while it's still really hot, I'm going to take this and wrap it around and make sure that the end is smooth so that there's no weird kinks to it and just bring it up. Take a clip, come behind and just clip it on, okay? Then we're gonna do the other side and do the exact same thing. So the, the clip is on the outside, we smooth it down, we roll it up, and then we kind of work our way, we work our way up. Oh, I didn't spray this, but that's okay. We'll spray it at the end before we do the roller, okay? And then we just hold it there and tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 just to make sure that it's getting warm. And then we can release it. And then because we didn't spray on the first step, let's just kind of do a little, you know, spritzy, spritzy. And then we take another roller and we go from the bottom and smooth it out. I'm trying to work backwards here, sorry, bear with me. <laughs> and then we are here like that and it should look relatively similar on both sides. Okay. Okay, so we have that. It should look like little Princess Leia. And that takes care of the whole back. So, takes care of the whole back, okay? Then moving up, what I like to do is I like to keep my hair parted where I part it. And then I take like a triangular section right here and get this out of my way. Okay, so you see that? Then because we forgot the hairspray, we can just do the whole, we can do the whole thing, okay? So now I'm going to take this section Where's this coming from? Here we go. And I'm gonna take this whole section, give it a little brush, just so that there's no tangles. And then with the clip up, I'm going to, oh, with the clip down, I'm going to just take the whole thing and make sure that it's in your iron and roll it away from you, okay? And then keep rolling it up and down. And that's okay if some falls out because we will go back and recurl that. Yeah, so like these pieces. We'll just go back in. to make sure that it goes down all the way to the end. So I'm tapping my curling iron. And then you do a little tippity tap. Oops. And then I'm gonna do another little spray. Then I'm gonna take a smaller roller
and put it on top like this. And then pin it in. Oops. Like that. Then I'm going to take this whole section. I'm going to brush it out. And then do the same thing. The clip goes on the bottom and then you smooth it down and up. And then you kind of just work your way In the front here, you want everything to be going away from your face because then that's how you get those nice billowy waves that everybody loves these days, okay? And so I'm gonna do another little spritzy spritz. Then I'm gonna take another roller, smooth that out a little. On top, like this, and then roll it up and then hook it in and it's okay if it's not like perfect like do you see it's okay we don't want it to be perfect okay so then for me this top part I'm just going to take everything and brush it forward I'm going to do a spritz Gonna do a spritz and just kind of disperse it through then I'm gonna take this whole section you could probably still see some of my dry shampoo in there actually um, which is okay because we're gonna be judging anyways so then you take this and you put your clip close to you and you just oh, do the same thing you roll it up and then you kind of just continue to, and it's okay if some falls out because we kind of, we don't need it to be perfect here. Okay, so then we do a little like tippity tap, tippity tap, tippity tap, tip, 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 tip. Okay, so then that is gonna be good. I'm going to give it a little bit of a spray. I'm going to take my last roller, which is pretty small. And I'm going to, do you see how it's flush? And then I just roll up like this, okay? If you have more hair than me, you can do like two or three um, rollers on the top. I just like to do one because I find that it gives me the most volume where I need it the most, which is right in the front. Because I don't know if you can see, but you can see right to my scalp here. So if you want more volume, you just direct everything forward and one roller. If you have more hair and you want more volume in the crown, um, I haven't put any rollers in my crown because I like to have my volume more in the front. But if you like to have it more in the crown, by all means, section the crown out and put you can put two rollers here okay so now i'm just going to do a spray on everything okay we want these to cool completely so if you you know in the morning you do this you make breakfast you put makeup on you um 
run your errands, like do anything. And then you can just, when it's, when everything is, you know, pretty cool, which it is, you just take the clips out. So I'm going to start with the first one I did, which is over here. And then you just kind of pull that out. And do you see how that gives me a nice, a nice little wave and then I'm gonna spray that and if you notice I'm just doing like a little spray I'm not like shh, shh, because then if you do too much it can become sticky and unmanageable so then I'm gonna go over here because this was my second one I'm gonna brush that out and then I'm just gonna twirl it around my finger look you know and then give it another little spray This was my next one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I'm gonna twirl it around my finger. I'm gonna give it a nice little spray. This was my next one. spray and then I'm just gonna take this one down and when I take this one down I'm going to brush it back because this is what's gonna help with the volume so I'm gonna go like this I'm just gonna take that out and then I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna spray a little bit here then I'm gonna part it where my part is And then you just zhuzh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top part and just roll it around my fingers a little bit to get a little bit of that volume. And so that way it's, you know, distributed into everything else. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. There you have it. A nice second day volumized do. Thanks everybody. I hope you learned something. If there's any questions please let me know and um, I had so much fun making this thanks Today, I am going to do a look called chocolate covered strawberries. I will edit this down after, but this is the long version in case someone wants to see the full makeover. I always put on face primer and eye primer before I apply my other products, just because I like to know that I haven't forgotten. And they serve very specific purposes. In this case, the eye primer is for my lids, for the eye color. With Chroma Fusion, we don't need that as much, but I've gotten into the habit of it. It also helps the makeup not clog my pores and come off more easily. I'm using an under eye corrector, kind of as a concealer too. Little spots here. I'm not crazy about, but I can then use a cream or liquid color brush. I know they always say put concealer on later, but I'm doing under eye corrector as under eye corrector, and I believe that goes under the foundation. You can always put more on later. That's the way I look at it. I'm just trying to get the spots that bother me on film to blend a little bit and go away. I have a mirror down here if I need to switch off 
because I don't like using the camera on the phone as my only source of point of view, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I might add music later. I may do a voiceover. Just trying to figure out how edited I want this to be. I used to put on makeup under such bright lighting. But it's something I'm trying to condition myself to so that I'm not squinting as much. I use brow tint sometimes, but I feel like I put it on too heavy. So I've been just using the pencil, filling in the areas that are a little thin, and then combing the hair into place. So it will uh, look natural. I don't want to shave off my eyebrows and do drawn in brows. I just need a little filling. And that works quite nicely for me. Maybe. And I use a little CC cream before foundation just because I like to counteract any redness. It's a little warm in my studio, so sometimes I get a little flush. Also, if this were anyone with rosacea or having any other discoloration, they too might want to uh, use a little bit. So since I'm running low on this color, I'm going to use the lightest color on my reddest part of my face. It's early winter maybe almost midwinter, so it's sometimes you need to switch between light to medium and medium to deep. So I'm going to use the medium to deep on the rest of the face. Then I'll go back over it with the foundation. This is just a light layer. It has a little SPF, so does the primer. If you're not into Foundation, you can always use CC cream in its place because it does have a little sun protection. Foundation does not have any SPF, at least ours doesn't, but it does uh, really want a primer. I tried doing foundation without it, it doesn't quite apply the same. But you can already see how much better the CC cream was at evening out my color. I'm currently a beige N200, which is, uh, I'm using a matte formula. I could be using a luminous formula, I just am choosing this because I'm going to be on camera and I want to reduce shine. I could use a finishing powder as well or a mattifier, but I'm not super oily. And I just want to get the color on. And I have a nice even complexion so I can focus on the eyes, which is the whole point of this particular demo. So we're not going to spend a ton of time doing this. But the eyes are brighter and the face is nice and even now. Some, some people like to bake with found off what they call translucent powder. I'm not a big fan. I prefer finishing spray in between various steps. I feel like it works better for me. So I have almost every brush known to man <laughs> in my collection here today because I wasn't sure what I'd need. And uh, you can probably do a look like this with just a handful of brushes. You do not need like 12. I just happen to choose to have multiple brushes handy. I'm going to make sure I set aside my blush brush for later. The chocolate covered strawberries look, this is not our compact. I just grabbed a magnet real fast because I found that the compact, <laughs> the mirror, and I guess also this causes issues. So there, now you can see it. So the color starting over here is called Blossom. Below it is Dusty Rose and then Rose Gold. In the middle row, we have Sunlit Rose, Hazelnut, and then Hot Fudge. And I chose to use Rosy Nude as the blush color. And I have a choice of either Appleberry Lipstick or Berry Famous Lip Gloss. I mean, these are in the same, they're all Mary Kay. I just wasn't sure how I was going to finish the look. I will also be finishing with our uh, Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner and Lash Primer with our Fanorama limited edition mascara, and then finishing spray, in case I forget to mention it. So with your big all over color brush, I usually do your lightest color along the brow bone. It's a matte, that's blossom, also in the inside corner. I might go back later and touch up this color. 
but this is just to brighten the whole eye area. Any shadowy corners you have. And of course, you always like your lightest colors along the brow bone. I'm not sure the whole science behind it. I just know that that is why I put my lightest colors there. So you can already see it's a little lighter. It's really almost invisible. You won't see it until you add the next color, which in this case, I believe I'm going to be going to Blossom and then Hazelnut. I'm doing all my matte colors first, basically. And I'm putting the Blossom on the inside of the lower lid and a little bit along the crease. There'll be overlap. I just want to make sure I'm putting the color I want first, and then I can always blend over it. So this is sort of like a, a not a, it's like a teardrop. I'm basically doing kind of a round circle here and then the line. So we get the light color and then we get the little mid-tone color. And then from the outside, I'm gonna do hazelnut, which is that matte brown color. I don't always do the half each part of the eye in a color, but I think this color looks nice when you use all six shades. It's also a matter of placement. So it's not a heavy duty dark brown. We have a darker brown we'll be using later. And we have some shimmers we'll be using later. Now, if you really wanna get that edge, you could switch to a crease brush and to really get in there. I mean, if you have a hooded lid, you may need to really move the color up a bit. I have deep set eyes, so I always run into the issue of meeting the color be a little higher than where most people would place it. So now we have the rose gold, which I am going to put kind of overlapping the dusty rose. And let's see which brush I'm going to use for that. I'm going to use a different all over color brush from our recent limited edition. Um, make sure this is the right one. Eyeshadow, here we go. This is from the little mini travel pack that we got. And I'm using that. I think I'm gonna keep it a little higher, like along the brow bone. And then I can come back over that. So it's not the whole eye area. I'm kind of cheating. I'm starting in the corner, but I'm going up over the brow line with the rose gold. Yes, older women and younger women can both wear shimmer, but it's also a matter of not going crazy. This isn't like a heavy glitter, it's just a shimmer. And then the other color that has a little bit of shimmer in it is Sunlit Rose. So I'm going to grab another colored little little mini brush. This one is the um, a blender, because I don't want to put it on too heavy. It's a little softer, again, from that mini pack. And I'm going to put this in the outside corner. So it's going to be a little over the pink, a little over the brown, if that makes sense at all. Sort of blending between the two, like right in the middle, really. Now, if you want to have a little fun, you could put some in the outside corner, I suppose. It wouldn't hurt things any. So it's already gonna be a little shimmery, but not super duper overkill. Now I have a detail brush here in the mini set. And there's also um, in the main brush set, if you've never seen it, it, I used it earlier. The one end was the spoolie. The other end is a very, very thin edged. See how thin that is. And I use that for darker colors kind of mimicking eyeliner. So I need to use my mirror for this. I will blend it out with a smudger. And of course I am gonna also go over this with the eyeliner because I love the eyeliner. But sometimes people just use eyeshadow as an eyeliner itself. They want a softer look. And you don't feel comfortable drawing with a pencil or a gel or a liquid liner. This is a nice option. So I don't know if you can see here, it's not really as defined yet. Mimicking my eyelash line. And I'm obviously doing this on the outside. I would never line in my eye. I don't think it's particularly safe. But if you want more than just that little bit, 
I would jump to the smudger, this guy, and I'd go in with this right on the lash line. So it's going to ride up on that pink and that brown a little, and it's probably going to overlap some of that sparkly. So if you want to go back and touch up sparkly colors, you may want to. So now we've got a little bit of a softer hot fudge. And as I said earlier, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of getting a color in the right place. If you don't feel like you have enough, you can always put more. If you feel like you have too much, you can always take them off. But I wanted to not go heavy duty on this color set. I wanted people to see how soft and blended. And it's actually kind of a neutral look. It's not as dark and it, or not as pink as people might think. And then this blush, I'm using the main end of it. But you can use this as a contour with an edge, depending on how you hold it. There's a little dimple here. So I'm just going to put it right here on the apple. It's not a very dark color. And, of course, on me, it's not really going to be particularly dark. But it's, it's enough to imply a little blush color. You can see it, but it's not like too much. I'm not a big lip liner person. A lot of people use lip liner. Um, I like to do this with my lipstick. Line my lip with lipstick and give it a little bit and then go back over it with the lip color. So give me a moment here. So you can see here, it looks a little crazy. I start that because I want to be sure I got a nice clean edge. And then I'm going to go in, but not too heavy. And this is the apple berry. I figured since it's chocolate covered strawberries, I want berry colored lip products. But if you feel like you want a little more gloss, then you will want to probably use Berry Famous. It is famous enough. Berry Delight. Berry Delight. Oh, that's pretty. It would be kind of moot if I did this over a matte color. That's the other reason I chose a semi shine gel lipstick. It's part of our newer lip colors. But I feel like this is a very nice finished look. When I add on the eyeliner and mascara, you'll see what I mean. This is one of those I need a mirror for, but basically I'm just drawing right along the lash line. As you can see here, a little, little wing, not a super duper big wing. I can, don't do a fancy cat eyes. I mean, I could. I just choose not to. And then a little bit of clear primer. We're putting on the mascara. Now, this is fun because this brush is um, got two sides to it. It's got kind of a curvy side. And a flattened side. The idea is that you'd start with the curvy side and wiggle it through, coat your lashes good. And then you go back over it with the flat side and do a second coat. You might notice I don't pump my mascara. I uh, twist as I push in and push out and that's to minimize introducing air and bacteria, which end up causing lots of stuff to grow inside your mascara, which is why we always replace it every three or six months once opened, even if you used it just once, trust me, stuff gets in every time. Plus, you think of it, you're brushing it against your lashes, and what do you do? You put it right back in. You can't tell me your lashes are perfectly sterile. So something is going into this bottle if it's on your body. So a little finishing spray. The final look. There's your chocolate-covered strawberries with a little... Augmentation of lip color and a little cheek color. Perfect for Valentine's, Galentine's, date night. If you want to know more about how to apply the look, cost of these items, where you can get them, just let me know. Have a great day.